Now with a look at all the latest headlines this Monday, it's the ITV News. Hospital admissions in England continue to rise as the Prime Minister discovers the impact of COVID at Christmas. Boris Johnson is holding off introducing further restrictions, but changes in Scotland and Northern Ireland have kicked in today. Also this lunchtime, energy bosses meet the business secretary to ask for help over rising energy prices and... Oh, he's bowled him! England's Ashes hopes hang by a thread as four wickets tumble in a disastrous final hour. This is ITV News with Faye Barker. Good afternoon. We're all about to find out the impact of Boris Johnson's decision to hold off on reintroducing COVID restrictions. The number of cases in England over Christmas will be released later this afternoon. Inside Downing Street, the government's top scientific advisers have been delivering the news directly to the Prime Minister. Already we know hospital admissions are up and the rise in cases before the holidays has already prompted changes in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Our political reporter Shehab Khan has the latest. With Covid cases continuing to rise, the four nations in the United Kingdom are taking different approaches to tackling. Here in Scotland there's a return to social distancing and table service for bars like this one. It could have a big impact on business and those in the sector are worried about losing out during the festive period. December is what gets you through January, February when you're going into the cold winter months when people aren't spending money and we really, really needed that. The whole industry needed it. So it's really disheartening to be hit with this right at the worst time possible. There are also new restrictions in Wales and Northern Ireland, but in England there is no news yet about any further measures. The Prime Minister is being briefed today on the latest data, particularly the impact on hospitalisations. Figures released today show seven-day hospital admissions are up across England by 36%. In London, that rises to an increase of 62%, and admissions in the North West are up by 47%. If it is spreading more rapidly in the over 60s, that's more likely to push up hospitalizations. So, yes, it is concerning, um, no doubt about it. Whether how concerning, though, is still a big uncertainty. But those on the front line are warning that as pressure on the NHS mounts, the need for further action might be inevitable. If you add that high hospitalization rate, to the number of NHS staff who are themselves unable to work because they have the virus. You're in a very difficult set of circumstances. And in those circumstances, it's important that the government continues to encourage us to behave in the ways which minimize the chances of us getting this virus or passing it on. As the festive period draws to an end, if cases and hospitalizations continue to rise, pressure will mount for further measures. Well, Shehab's here now. So, Shehab, how likely are further changes in England at this point now? Well, sources inside Number 10 are saying today that this was a routine meeting with the Prime Minister and they are sort of putting water on that idea that we could have further restrictions immediately. It's important to note that if any major new restrictions would are to come in, Parliament would have to be recalled, MPs would have to get a vote on it. That's something the Prime Minister has already agreed upon. And we've seen in recent months how difficult that's been. There are plenty of Conservative MPs in particular who don't want further restrictions and are quite openly rebelling against the Prime Minister. It's difficult territory, but the new data has come in. It's something that we know Number 10 are looking at, so it's one to keep an eye on. OK, Shihab Khan for now. Thank you. The business secretary, Kwasi Kwarteng, has held an emergency meeting with energy bosses today. Suppliers want the government to step in to stop big price rises over the coming year. Well, Martha Fairley is at the Department for Business now. So, Martha, it's unusual to have this meeting on the bank holiday after Christmas. So just how concerned are the energy companies? 
Well, the timing of this meeting certainly does convey a sense of urgency. Today, as you say, is the Christmas bank holiday, and yet the bosses of some of the UK's largest energy companies were on a virtual meeting this morning with the business secretary, Kwasi Kwarteng. Now, they are very concerned about the way that wholesale gas prices have skyrocketed since September, causing more than 30 companies to go out of business. And they're also frustrated by what they perceive as a lack of action by both the government and the regulator Ofgem uh, to solving what they see as going to be an enormous crisis in 2022. And Energy UK, the trade body that represents those energy companies, says that household bills are likely to go up again next year. Current estimates are that the price cap is going to go up by an awful lot this spring. It's going to have to go up to recover some of the costs of both supply of failure and the impact that's had on the market and also because of higher gas prices. So we're seeing estimates of around you know, 2,000, the price cap being set around 2,000 pounds this spring, which is an awful lot of money. That's the average household Well, potential bill. solutions that are being looked at include uh, cutting taxes and also uh, cutting the green energy levy that is uh, currently put on ga uh, gas and electricity companies. And it's hoped that that might help to reduce household bills in the short term. OK, Martha, thank you. To other news, and police have apologised to the family of Dalian Atkinson six months after an officer was jailed for manslaughter. The former Aston Villa player was killed after PC Benjamin Monk tasered him and kicked him in the head. West Mercia's Chief Constable Pippa Mills said she was deeply sorry. Police are investigating a video in which a masked figure holding a crossbow says he intends to assassinate the Queen. It comes after a 19-year-old man was arrested on Christmas Day in the grounds of Windsor Castle. He's since been sectioned under the Mental Health Act. Finally, England's Ashes hopes are hanging by a thread in the third test match in Melbourne. Needing to a win to avoid a series defeat, England's bowlers raise hopes of a comeback. But another disastrous display with the bat has left the tourists in a perilous position. Chris Scudder was watching. Sometimes it's just the hope that kills you. And he's got him. England's attack got them back in the match. Oh, he's got him. Bowled him. And it's Smith. The fast bowling was hostile and they roughed up the old enemy. Australia were bowled out for 267, a first innings lead of 82 that brought some hope. That's it. Mark Woods finished it off. But then it was England's turn to bat again and you knew what was coming. Oh, has that taken the edge? Everyone celebrating with the fingers gone though. And the very next ball from Stark, England were in tatters. Close, it's close, and up goes the finger. Another collapse, albeit against some sensational fast bowling. Oh, edge through and gone. And with England trying to hang on, they crumbled. Oh, he's bowled him, leaving it alone. Oh dear, oh dear, England are imploding here. The shadow of defeat looms again, and unless Root can come up with a Christmas miracle tomorrow, the ashes are lost. Chris Scudder, ITV News. Slightly painful viewing. Well, that is it this lunchtime. Julie Etchenham will be here with all the latest at quarter to five. The news where you are follows the national weather. But from everyone here for now, bye-bye.